that about 60% of pre-retirees thought retirement would be the most liberating phase of their life, and it can be, but you certainly need to have a realistic look at the retirement landscape for that to happen. So, here's the first reality. This is no longer your grandparents' or your parents' retirement world. You know, our parents may have saved enough for a few years of leisure in retirement. Some may have even had a defined pension and that helped support their final years. But today, at least in the United States, such pensions are far less common. Also today, we're living longer than ever. For example, the average age in the United States, and that's similar to other industrialized countries, is 79 and the Social Security Administration in the United States anyway projects that one in three people who make it to 65 will live into their 90s. <laughs> That's a long time. As Market Watch reported, we could even live longer in retirement than we spent in our careers. Now, trying to entertain yourself or simply pass time for years isn't going to lead to a satisfying retirement. Would you believe a surprising number of people find retirement boring. A British study uh, found that the average retiree grows bored within the first year, and one in ten said they're bored or struggle to find ways to pass time after the first five months. Most retirees, according to this study, spend time reading, watching television, and hanging out with significant others. Can you imagine doing that for 20, maybe 30 years? In your next chapter? I can't. Boredom and a lack of social interaction can be a downside for those who are not prepared. Now interestingly, a Harris Interactive study found retirees often want to keep productive. In fact, seven in ten pre-retirees said they would want to include some kind of work in retirement, and though most want part-time or something flexible. Continued income may be an important motivation, especially in an uncertain economy. However, stimulation and social connections are just as important. Our thinking about retirement has really shifted. Some retirement professionals are saying there is no, t no, no such thing as retirement anymore and we need to retire the word retirement. And I pretty much agree. So another new reality is that working, at least part-time, is becoming much more common for people once they reach retirement age. So some turn to self-employment or entrepreneurship as a way uh, to, find, uh, to uh, find opportunities to stay engaged. Have you ever considered being your own boss or being an entrepreneur? If so, what do you think you'd like to do? There are lots of opportunities for motiv motivated entrepreneurs. Now here's an interesting thought. Business insiders suggest that specializing in a market that serves ad older adults could be a good bet. The world is getting older. And in fact, by two th uh, 2034, there will be more 65-year-olds in the U.S., for example, than those under 18. And there are certainly countries that are older in terms of population than the U.S. A great book uh, to get some insights about the older market is Joseph Coughlin's Longevity Economy. I'd strongly recommend it. Some business really could use help working with older customers, too. While working, at least part-time, um, you can find a sense of continued productivity. But financial considerations are often very important as um, a motivator to work part-time as well. In the United States, the National Institute on Retirement Security reports only 7% of retirees have ideal situation of income from three sources such as Social Security, a pension, and savings. So my question to you is, what sources will you be drawing from when you retire? And how stable are those sources? We found out some of our sources weren't quite as secure as we thought once we got into the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, here's some more fun facts. In 2015, a study found that over half the people kind of nearing that retirement age carried a mortgage debt into retirement. And even for those who had a home paid off, um, 
they still have to maintain their homes. Last year, for example, my husband and I had to replace the roof, our furnace, and our air conditioner, and we spent about $22,000. We hadn't really calculated as part of our living expenses in retirement. A 2018 study by Transamerica Center for Retirement Studies found that 45% of retirees had non-mortgage debt. That averaged about $4,000. And then, of course, there's unexpected expenses, which include health costs. Now, of course, it depends on where you live, but if you're in the United States, the estimated uh, cost for a married couple for health care is $285 thousand dollars during retirement and that doesn't even cover long-term care and about 70 percent of adults eventually are going to need long-term care so when you think about retirement you've got to think about some of these financial issues and then with long-term care insurance depending on where you live again you may not be able to get it when you get too old so you've got to invest in some of those things earlier and then there's gray divorce, and that's becoming a lot more common. It's doubled since the 1990s, and that certainly can affect your retirement preparation. And we've talked about it before, but COVID-19 can certainly affect your long-term retirement plans. And then gender can affect your finances as well. Newsweek in 2020 reported the average woman loses about 408 thousand dollars over a lifetime because of gender gaps lower wages in the u.s lower social security and um, the time out for caregiving as well because women tend to be the primary caregivers so have you taken a good look at your current spending and analyzed what you might need in the future do you think your retirement savings and investments are on track have you talked to a professional financial advisor, a certified financial advisor? Have you um, developed some passive streams of income? Do you have the option to work part-time or develop your own work later? And what do you think you still need to do? I would start getting a journal and start jarting some of these thoughts down and, and reviewing them. Now, you may think you have your finances figured out uh, and you figure, hey, I'll just keep working a little bit longer. A lot of people think they're going to even work until they're 70, <laughs> but that usually doesn't happen. I plan to work three additional years myself. I was going to work until two, uh, 2021, but I ended up retiring in 2018 because stress-related problems started affecting me. Workers often end up leaving their full-time positions well before they plan to do so. A survey by the Employer Benefits Institute found that 34% of active employees ended up uh, leaving before they had planned to do so. Now here's another reality. An urban study found that about half of full-time workers aged 51 to 54 uh, experienced <laughs> some involuntary shifts. They were basically pushed out of the workplace. And you know what? That is not that uncommon. Older workers are often perceived as out of touch and unable to learn. In addition, a lot of times older workers really are more costly. They're at the top of their salary scale. Unfortunately, age discrimination is a reality. We may not even recognize it until it happens to us. The World Health Organization says that age-related stereotype, uh, stereotyping and discrimination is the most prevalent type of prejudice in the world today. Other reasons people typically leave the workplace earlier than planned include family issues such as caregiving and health issues. So what about caregiving after retiring? Most of us um, have uh, older family members and they will probably need some degree of care. As we discussed earlier, about 70% of older adults, at least in the U.S., are going to need some care, some long-term care, or some assistance. Unfortunately, most of us haven't had needed conversations with our older family members. We haven't asked them what 
they want, what they expect, how they're going to be taken care of, and who's going to do it. Again, not surprisingly, women are the ones that usually take care of family members, whether still uh, working or after retirement. Various studies, um, so uh, various studies uh, have uh, said uh, uh, that we also need to think about our own care needs. Are you going to be able to take care of yourself? You know that one bad fall, which tends to start happening as we get into our 40s, um, could cause a broken hip and that could affect your life and your independence forever. The likelihood of having a fall, like I said, increases a lot earlier than you think. My daughter-in-law has a doctorate in physical therapy and she says one of the best things you can do to prepare for your next chapter as you start to age is to work on your balance. And you know what? I do that every single day. Can you think of anybody else in your family who's going to need assistance in the near future? Have you talked to that person about their care needs? These are questions you really need to ask yourself before you retire so that you can plan on how you're going to handle these situations. Right now I know three retired couples in my neighborhood where one uh, significant other is taking care of a spouse or somebody they care about. You know, it can bring you closer together to a loved one, but it also includes emotional, financial, and physical costs. And you need to think about it and be prepared for it. And then, of course, there's health issues. Health issues uh, can factor into how long we will stay in the workplace. And these issues can also affect your quality in your retirement years. So let's talk a little bit about that. It doesn't matter how much money you have or how much you've saved or how many plans you've made. If you lose your health, you'll lose the opportunity to live your best life in retirement. Approximately 85% of older adults have at least one chronic illness and 60% have at least two chronic conditions and that's according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. For many older people, coping with multiple conditions can be a real challenge. A loss of health can involve a loss of independence and the ability to do things you enjoy. Research tells us to invest early in our health. A lot of people say, oh, well, I'll start exercising or I'll start eating right when I retire. No. What you do in midlife is going to affect you for the rest of your life. Exercise, diet, and regular checkups, including dental and vision, that's really important if you want to live your best life now and in the future. So nix some of those bad habits. Make sure you start getting enough sleep now. Keep stress in check. That can raise havoc on your health if you have too much stress. And that's one of the reasons why I ended up retiring a little bit earlier than I planned to. Stress is a killer. The World Health Organization recommends that we get 150 minutes of moderate exercise a week or 75 minutes of vigorous activity during each week plus a couple days where we do strength training. Various studies have suggested that we eat a diet that includes fresh fruit, vegetables, whole grains, fish, nuts, beans, and that can be very beneficial for our health. I have radically changed my own diet in the last few years and I am enjoying a better life because of it. Now here's something interesting. Would you believe your attitude your attitude towards life and towards aging can affect your overall quality of life and actually your longevity. The World Health Organization reports that a positive attitude towards aging is associated with a longer, healthier life. Having an optimistic attitude can improve your overall health and well-being and longevity. Optimists are those who expect good things to happen. People with optimistic attitudes tend to live 10 to 15 percent longer, according to one study, than those who don't. Other studies suggest anyone can learn to be optimistic simply by practicing this type of visualization, seeing the best things for your life. Doing that five minutes a day can help. And it's believed that people who have a positive attitude towards aging and towards life are more motivated to take care of themselves. So you can see how it all works together. That makes sense to me.